advanced queries for the Elemental Loop Grid have become easier than ever using the Jet Engine Query Builder. Previously, if you had a loop grid created using Elementor Pro and you wanted to do something like show multiple post types within the same loop grid, for example, you see here we have posts and we have events, which are two different post types, then you'll have had to write your own code snippets. You'll have used something like the example that they have here in the custom query filter. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I also did a couple of videos using the query filter, which I'll leave in the description as well. Basically, you'd have come over here to some of the examples, then copy the filter, then you have to paste it in your code snippets plugin, then you copy the query ID and then paste it within your loop grid and so many things, but you have to understand how the code worked. But now with Jet Engine, you just have to come over to the query builder. Then you just simply do it visually now. So you basically see here under post type, I just simply added the posts and the events. And that's what showed up in my loop grid. And that's what we're looking at how to create in today's video. We can even do something like, let's go back to look at the examples. And here they showed how to show popular posts by comment count. It's simple with the query builder as well. If I come over to the query builder, if I go down, I'll see comments. And I just choose the number of comments that I want. If it is greater than or equal to that number of comments, it should show up. And that is how you can easily create different kind of queries which are advanced using the Query Builder. And in today's video, I'll be using the Query Builder to show you how to query multiple post types as well as query by taxonomy or to query by a meta field. So now let's jump right into it. <laughs> For this tutorial, you need the following plugins, which are Elementor, Elementor Pro, Jet Engine, and an add-on which I'll link to in the description. Basically, it's this add-on, Jet Engine Query Builder, and Elementor Pro Loop. You just have to go and download the plugin, then you install it like a regular plugin. This was actually requested for a long while ago, but I guess they didn't see it back then. There was a request for it. I'll leave a link to that request in the comments and in the description. And then fortunately, Mark from Wikidesign approached the Crocoblock team and they finally came up with a solution. So that's why we have the solution now. After you've installed all of these plugins, the next thing you need is to create your post or your custom post type. In this case, I created a custom post type using Jet Engine called events and then I also created a custom taxonomy called event location. I also went ahead and I attached this custom taxonomy both to the events custom post type and the posts. So you can see here if I go under jet engine and then post types, I created the events custom post type which is here. Then I went ahead to the taxonomies and I created an event locations taxonomy and I attached it to both the event post type and the posts post type. So the events location, if you can see the examples here, this is the events. We have several events and these are the locations attached to those events. So we have Spain, just basically different countries. The first example we'll be looking at is how to query multiple post types within the same loop grid. So we're not using separate loop grids, we're using the same loop grid, but we're querying multiple post types. You can either go ahead and create your loop grid first or your query filter first. So I'll go ahead and create the query first. So let me go under Jet Engine, Query Builder. These were the ones I created before, so I'll create a new one. And I'll give it the name, let's say events loop query. Then you can give it a description if you want so you can remember it. Remember that the query type currently only works with the posts query. 
because the Elementor loop grid technically only worked well with the post query, and then they just created the taxonomy query quite recently, which still needs some things to make it fully working. We're not using this query ID here. This one is mainly for JetSmart filters. What we need now is to create the actual query we want, our custom query. In this case, I said I wanted to query several post types. Or first, let's just even do the simple example and say I'm just trying to query for my event, which have a term within the taxonomy query. Let me add a new one. I just want it to be under the event locations, the field, you can choose ID or name, whichever one you want to work with. I'll work with the name here. I say I want the name to be Spain. And then the default is in. So basically we want, if this exists within the taxonomy for that post, then it should show up. So that's it. Then go ahead and then add the query. So that's the first step. The second step now is you now go back to your address bar. You see the address bar where you see the query action. The thing you need to check here is the ID. So that ID here, you just copy it. So the ID is nine, copy that. Then that's the main thing we need. So I'll go ahead and now create a new page. So pages, I'll add a new page. I'll say maybe something like events listing demo. I'll publish it. Then go ahead and edit it with Elementor. In here, I'll go ahead and drop in my loop grid. So now, ideally, you now go ahead and create a new template. But for this example, I've already created a template. So I'll just choose an existing template. I'll look for the template I created which is called events loop. I like to name things. So I named it based on the kind of loop, which is the events loop. So that whenever I'm searching, I can always easily get it. So this is the events loop. It is basically telling you the post type and the event location so that you know exactly what is going on here. This is just a demo. As you can see right now, it's pulling in posts and it's just pulling in all the locations. So now we want to narrow it down to the events itself. We can either go to the query and then choose events as our source, or in this case, we're trying to test out that the query builder is actually working. So you come under query ID, and then this is all you have to write, query dash builder, then a dash again, and the number you copied, I think it was nine. And you see, if I publish it, let's get rid of the navigator. See, it now shows events which have the location of Spain. So those are the only ones that are showing up. If I come back to the query builder, I can now add in more things. So I can say now not only events, I want to do multiple post types. So I come back to the post type and say posts. So now what's happening is that I'm querying for my events and my posts that have the event location of Spain. So if I update this, I'll go back and let's preview it on the front end. And you can see now it's showing me post type posts and Spain. Then we have events and Spain. So it's giving me multiple post types within the same loop grid. I can also come further and come back here and say, no, okay, I only want events, but this time I want to now do a meta query. So I want to order it by the start date because let me show you from the events themselves. If you go to the events, you see each event, it has a start date, an end date, an order ID and so on. So I want to order by the start date. This was one of the examples I showed using ACF and a custom query. I'll leave a link to it in the description. 
But this time now we're using Jet Engine in this case. You can actually still use ACF and then combine it with the Jet Engine Query Builder. So let's go ahead and go back to the Query Builder. So I want events. I want the meta query, add new. So the key is the start date. So if I don't remember it, this is all going to be visual. Before we're doing things manually in the previous example I showed with ACF, which I said I will link to in the description. Now everything is going to be visual. So come here and then it's a jet engine field. So I'll search for jet engine, meta field. The field is the start date and it is the name I want to return because it's asking for the field key or the name. So I'm returning the field name, apply. The comparison is that I want it to be greater than or equal to today. So I'll say greater than or equal to. Then the value I'll use again, dynamic tags. And if you scroll down to the end, you see today. Choose that. The type is date. So I'll choose date. Then to be able to order it, I'll just basically take this order, this whole meta query, and then order by this meta query. One easy way you can do it is just give it a clause name and then use this clause name in your order. So say clause name should be maybe event start dates with an S or anything you want to name it. Copy this. Then I'll go back to general. Then order by, I'll create a new order by and I'll choose order by meta clause so click on that then the clause is that name so i don't even need to remember the name so it's the name i choose event start dates and the order should it be ascending or descending i think it should be ascending so starting from the earlier ones to today and going forward so i'll say lowest to highest i think that's it so let me update it and see if it works then i'll go back to my example I'll refresh it. As you can see, oh, it didn't work. So let me see what went wrong. I'll go back. So I said the event start date. So let me go back to the meta query. Greater than or equal to today. It's a date. Oh, I think it was timestamp instead. So let me use timestamp. Update it. And I'll refresh again and see if it works. Oh yes, so that's why. Because I didn't choose timestamp. If I go back to my query builder and I go back to the post type that I created. So let's go back to create post types. And events. If you go under the start date, you will see that I saved it as a timestamp. So that's why it wasn't working. Because I saved it as timestamp, it is creating it as a Unix timestamp rather than an actual date field. So that's why I, when I chose date, it didn't work properly. But when I choose timestamp, then it works properly. So that's why if you now see, there are only two of them, August and September. And that's because the dates for today as the time I recorded this video is July 24th. So that's why these are all from August, September. Let's go ahead and see if I go back to the query builder and then I choose rather than the forward, let me choose backward. So let's say go back to the meta query. Then rather than greater than or equal to, I'll say less than. So let's say less than or equal to. Update the query. Then I come back and refresh. You see now, it's only dates that are before July the 24th. So that is June, June 25th, and July 5th. So you see, this is how easy it works. So you just have to make sure that you remember the kind of field that you created and then follow it step by step. If it doesn't work, then go back and then just go ahead and debug it and you see if there's any problems. So yeah, that's it. So let's go back to the query builder. Say, let me go ahead and delete the meta query. 
and see if I want to go general. So you can even order by multiple parameters. If you want to order by maybe date first, then give a fallback, order by something else. And like that, you can order by multiple parameters. Let me delete this. Let's see what else you want to do. Say we want only posts now. So if I go to posts that are in this time, rather than using the taxonomy name, I'll use the term ID. So I'll go to my, let's go to where an example is and go back. Let me go to the event locations. I'll choose Argentina. And if I look at the bottom, I'll see the tag ID is equal to 18. So I can now use that ID of 18. Let's see if it works. Come back to the query builder. I'll come to taxonomy query. And say rather than the name, I want it to be the term ID. And I want it to be that 18. Update. So if I come back and refresh, so we have all the posts that are related to Argentina. So you see, that's how easy it is using the query builder. So hopefully this has helped you out. If it has, please do leave a like, share the video. And in the comments, you can also thank Mark for raising up the issue with CrocoBlock and CrocoBlock coming up with the solution. So you can give your thanks to CrocoBlock as well in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.